We ran into some slight difficulties. Two slight difficulties. One was a four. Everything's still plugged in. That's all that matters. Wait, please stand up and stand up.
I'm honored for what? To be late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you can see Hello, I am Braden License, and I am the leader of this, or president of this youth group, and the leader of this service. The name of it is Sindesi, which comes from a Greek word meaning connection. That's all I got for the greeting. I'll see y'all later. Glad you're here. Oh, yeah, I'm glad y'all are here. I actually thought I already said that. What's the advice schedule? What's next? Alright. Now, will you guys bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for letting us all get to come here today. And please be gracious to us. It was our first time trying to do this. But um, just help us to serve you in all the ways that we can. And speak through great and help us get a message from this. And be connected and be able to take this into our lives. And just now I pray. Amen. You know, it takes bigger people a longer time to get out of the places. Well, I tried stuff. Got it, Alex? No. Of course, you don't got it. All right, you got it? Of course, you don't got it. What? Alright, right, well, it's like I'm reading the Apostle Speak today. I haven't heard about that. Don't worry about it. Ah, uh, yep. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs>
Okay, today we are going to be reading out of Matthew 14, verses 6 through 16, if anyone wants to follow along. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of the Herodians danced in front of the whole group. Herod was so pleased that he promised her, I swear that I will give you anything you ask for. At her mother's suggestion, she asked him, Give me here and now the head of John the Baptist on a plate. The king was sad, but because of the promise he had made in front of all his guests, he gave orders that her wish be granted. So he had John beheaded in prison. The head was brought up on a plate and given to the girl, who took it to her mother. John's disciples came, carried away his body, and buried, buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard the news about John, he left there in a boat and went to a lonely place by himself. The people heard about it, and so they left their towns and followed him by land. Jesus got out of the boat and went and saw a large crowd. His heart was filled with pity for them, and he healed their sick. That evening his disciples came to him and said, It is already very late, and this is a lonely place. Send the people away and let them go into the villages and buy food for themselves. They don't have to leave, answered Jesus. You yourselves give them something to eat. John the Baptist head and uh, Herod was like hmm, I didn't tell you anything so I guess I can give you John the Baptist head so he looks at his men says be gone with his head and they bring it to her so So, John's disciples, or followers, whatever you want to call them, went, got his body, buried it, then they went and told Jesus. Now, when Jesus heard this news, he withdrew himself to a boat, a desolate place. He got on a boat and went to a desolate place by himself. Now, we don't really know where he went or how long he was gone. If it was five minutes, five hours, five miles, we don't, we don't know. Well, the weird thing is, Jesus could have just went and got his head. You good? Yeah, I'm good. And they go on about that day. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus, Jesus didn't do that because he wanted us to show us. He wanted to show us another part of. I don't know if it's being human or what the word I'm looking for is. And. But when they could be more like Jesus, we I gotta be nicer. I gotta be a better person. And yeah, that's that's good. Don't get me wrong. Some of you need to be more nicer. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. But we leave out what Jesus did right here in verse 13. While in the boat, Jesus broke. When he broke, he was like. I did not expect this. I, I, I didn't see this coming. There's some some of us, we need to break. Can't be this stone-faced Christian 
Nothing can get to me. Hashtag no emotion. But Jesus doesn't heal John the Baptist so he can show we need to break. Oh, wait. My bad. I read that wrong. He doesn't heal John the Baptist so he can show we can break. Okay, I'm not letting my mom help me again. You messed up bad. <laughs> he showed us it's okay to break. But when I say break, it means, you know, we need to pray. We need to get, get it out. Maybe not so much flip the tables and the temple, get it out. But if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. So, you know, we go, we go through hell throughout the week. Then we get to Sunday. People say, how are you? Oh, you know, I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> but in reality, we just had one of the worst weeks of our life. Maybe you didn't expect to lose this loved one. Maybe you didn't expect your boyfriend to dump you. Maybe things aren't great with your parents. Whatever it is, just let, let it out. If Jesus broke, it is okay for you to break too. Because if Jesus does it, it's got to be okay for us to do it. But after this moment of brokenness, we need to move on. After Jesus gets back ashore, he sees that the people have followed him. So, when he steps out of the boat, as soon as he touches shore, in a sense, he goes right back to healing, right back to blessing. You know, he's just doing Jesus things. So some of us, or, while some of us need to break, others of us maybe need to compose. You aren't the only one going through this or that. You think you're the only one that's getting picked on, or the only one that has your parents split, or anything you're struggling with. There's someone tonight struggling or has struggled with it. Now some of you are good at breaking, but feel sorry for yourself, and that's it. You walk around like a big sob story. Hey. Be like Jesus here. Uh, turn. No. So just be like Jesus here. When we step out, of, when we break, let's get out of the boat. As soon as we touch land, let's be. Let's get back to what we're called to be. So, okay. some of you, like I said, need to compose yourself. Move on. Break the chains. Whatever has been holding you back. You're not going through it alone. Move on, step out of the boat, and let's go. I mean, as Christians, we lay down our lives for heaven's cause. But are we doing that if we're just, oh, my cat just died. Three weeks later, you're still sad about your cat. I, I get it. You know. And then something else happens. We drag that out. And then another thing happens. You know, over and over some of us, our biggest limit, our only limitation is a broken record we keep playing. You can tweet that if you want. I get that maybe you need assistance for a season, but if it's not here now, then it's not necessary. Why you think it's necessary, then, yeah, for that season, it's necessary. But if it's not here now, it's not necessary. I get up. Hang on. I've messed up. I apologize. So instead of whining about what we lost, maybe we praise the Lord for what we lost. Because maybe what we lost isn't such a bad thing. Maybe it's good this person left your life. Maybe it's good your cat died because you're not going to be that lonely cat lady when you get older. <laughs> I'm not pointing any fingers. 
school because you got braces. Staying hurt ain't gonna help you. Oh man. I'm out of Can I tell you what? No, no, no. <laughs> Can I tell you why? Because if you stay broken, you become bitter. Because all broken or, sorry. Because all bitterness is is just brokenness untreated. If you stay bitter, you'll start saying, all men are dogs. But there's some really good men out there, like them all. <laughs> One that out there? If you start saying, this youth group stinks. That's why I don't attend youth group. Well, guess what? It's not every youth group that's bad. You might say, well, they don't know how to treat broken people. It's the pastor. It's the kids in there. It's the youth leaders. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's not so much this youth group or that youth group. Maybe it's that you. <laughs> Maybe you say, well, I just need a new opportunity. It's not the opportunity, dummy. It's you. Oh, but they don't... They don't treat people like me well. Guess what? You're not the only one to go through. Like I said earlier, you aren't the only one here dealing or have dealt with this. There's a cloud of witnesses here to show you you can make it. Through it. Make it through it. We serve a God that's bigger than any of our problems we face. If you stay bitter, you stay broken. And those of you that stay composed, you'll lose compassion. You'll stay so composed, you'll forget what it feels like to hurt. You'll see someone struggling with sin and just go, Psh, they need church. <laughs> but if we keep reading, after Jesus gets out of the boat and he's doing his Jesus thing, it becomes dark after a while. The disciples, look, the disciples say, Lord, we need to get going, it's getting dark. We've got to go get something to eat and rest. Jesus goes, no. We're going to feed them. Or I guess them. I'm not Jesus. Just imagine he's right here saying them. Can't have that problem. It's not like Jesus needed to have the biggest fish fry ever. He did it to show the disciples that, around, that while around him, they lack nothing. He goes, says to Peter, when I met you, you couldn't even catch a fish. You couldn't even prepare a meal. Provide a meal. Same thing. But now you're all composed because you got you got around me. Maybe some of us need, just need to go back to where we were before God found us so we can understand what it's like to hurt again. So I understand that when I was found, I had nothing. So we understand that there's someone just like me. I gotta let God work through me, but I can't have I can't that can't happen if I'm too composed. There's so many people that deal with Christian amnesia that don't remember what it's like before Christ, what it was like to be broken and hurt and lost. Before you had Jesus, you just ratchet and have everybody to talk to. Now you have Jesus. You blessed an alley baby. You found Boaz. You think 
point at your single friends and go, you need to get your act together. I'm here to tell you. We were lost in sin, but then God showed up. Oh, I'm here to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were lost in sin. I think God showed up and miraculously changed is what changed in us. We got the nerve, I got the nerve, you got the nerve to point at people lost in sin and just go, terrible person, they need church. But I mean, we don't deserve to do that. We're nothing without the grace of God. We're nothing without the mercy. We're nothing without the blood of Jesus. I'm not sure how long that was. That's it. <laughs>
Thank you for letting us um, be gathered here today. Thank you for speaking through Braden and hopefully touching many people's hearts. Um, we ask that you bless our weeks and let us live a life for you and do everything in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join us for fellowship and s'mores. Yay! Yay. 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 Yay.